In this video, we look at conjugate pairs of natural transformations. To be able to define conjugate pairs, we need the following result. Consider the following diagram of functors, where fg and f prime, g prime are adjoint situations, and we do not require any commuting conditions. Then there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the collection of natural transformations from f prime p to qf and the collection of natural transformations from pg to g prime q. We define the assignment theta on the natural transformation delta from f prime p to qf as g prime q epsilon g prime delta g eta prime pg, as given in the string diagram. We then define gamma on the natural transformation psi from pg to g prime q as epsilon prime qf f prime psi f f prime p eta, as given in the string diagram. We show that these assignments give us a one-to-one -one correspondence. If we take gamma theta on delta, we obtain the following string diagram, where the box on the inside is a natural transformation theta delta. Then we use the triangle identities for fg and f prime g prime, respectively, which shows that this is equal to delta. Conversely, if we take theta gamma on psi, we obtain the following string diagram, where the box in the center is gamma psi. Then again, by the triangle identities for fg and f prime g prime, we obtain psi, showing that theta and gamma are inverse assignments, giving us the one-to-one -one correspondence. We still need to show naturality in components p and q. This means given a natural transformation alpha from q to q prime, and a natural transformation beta from p prime to p, the following two squares commute, where the, the vertical maps in the top square are post-composition by alpha, and the vertical maps in the bottom square are pre-composition by beta. So given a natural transformation delta from f prime p to qf, we take the high road giving us the natural transformation g prime q prime epsilon g prime alpha f g g prime delta g eta prime p g. And then we can see that the low road takes us to g prime alpha g prime q epsilon g prime delta g eta prime p g which is clearly seen to be equal by naturality, making the top square commute. The commuting condition for the bottom square is completely analogous, therefore the isomorphism is natural in P and Q. We can now define delta psi to be a conjugate pair with respect to the diagram and the proposition, if and only if theta delta is equal to psi, or equivalently gamma psi is equal to delta. And we say that delta is the left mate of psi, and psi is the right mate of delta. We sometimes will use the following green arrow to denote this situation, since it gives us orientation of both delta and psi as natural transformations. Then if delta psi is a conjugate pair, we say psi, respectively delta, satisfies the beck chevalier condition if and only if delta, respectively psi, is a natural isomorphism. And we say that psi, respectively delta, satisfies the strict beck chevalier condition if and only if delta, respectively psi is the identity natural transformation, or in other words, that the diagram involved commutes. As shorthand, we write BCC for beck chevalier condition. The next result shows how conjugate pairs compose horizontally and vertically. One, if delta psi and delta prime psi prime are conjugate pairs in the following diagram, where the vertical morphisms are in the joint situations, then Q prime delta delta prime P and psi prime q, p prime psi, is a conjugate pair for the outer rectangle. And two, if delta psi and delta prime psi prime are conjugate pairs in the following diagram, then delta h, f prime delta prime, k prime psi, psi prime g, is a conjugate pair for the outer rectangle. To prove one, it is enough to show theta, as defined above, takes the natural transformation q prime delta delta prime p to psi prime q p prime psi. So we give the string diagram for theta q prime delta delta prime p, where the inner square is q prime delta delta prime p. Then by the triangle identity for f prime g prime, we can add a string equal to f prime in the center. Then we notice that the substring on the left side is equal to theta delta, which is by definition psi and also that the right-hand side of this string diagram is theta delta prime, which is equal to psi prime by definition. 
Therefore, we obtain psi prime q, p prime psi. For two, recall that joint situations commute with the resulting unit and co-unit being the following compositions of their respective units and co-units. We will denote the unit and co-unit of uk by alpha and beta respectively, and use alpha prime, beta prime for the unit and co-unit of the adjoint situation, u prime, k prime. Then to show two, it is again enough to show theta on delta h f prime delta prime is equal to k prime psi psi prime g. So we give the string diagram for theta delta h f prime delta prime, where the inner square is a diagram for delta h f prime delta. By naturality, we can separate these two strings by extending the middle string corresponding to the functor p, then observe that the top substring diagram is equal to theta delta, which is psi and the bottom string is equal to theta delta prime, which is equal to psi prime, by definitions of psi and psi prime as the right mates of delta and delta prime. Therefore, we obtain k prime psi, psi prime g, as desired, and that completes the proof.